let's take it in a drafts. Series number two, game number one, Dragonshire Oxygen Esports versus Rage and Quit Gaming. Or sorry, is this just Rage Quit Gaming? It shows up as Rage and Quit on the website. Let's go ahead and call them Rage Quit. I thought, I thought it was a bit of an awkward phrasing in the first place. So, so far, well, we saw a lot of priority in the past and what I expect to see continuing priority, honestly, almost regardless of map, is Junkrat, Hanzo, Lucio, and Hogger. Those are heroes that I expect to be rather evergreen, regardless of series. I think it's going to be here soon. Mods, thank you for chipping in right there and getting rid of the suspicious links for the VTubers. Uh, get that out of here. <laughs> Rexar. Going to be band number one, Blaze, band number two. Looking at taking away some offlaners from the game at the start. Blaze main tank, absolutely an option as we saw last game, although it didn't perform super, super well. Not inspiring a ton of confidence. But Rexar taken away. This is one of his best maps in the entire game. Able to just simultaneously pressure on the wave and on the point. Naturally going to be difficult. Junkrat able to provide so much wave clear. The ability to anchor the bot lane. The ability to control the vision in the triangle bushes. All these bands. Fairly standard stuff here for Dragonshire. And there is a Sylve as well. One of the best generalist heroes of the game. If you ask me, in the current state of the game, I say this uh, as a GM player. Sylve, kind of free low. Okay, she fits every draft. She is, you, you need a burst, you need to sustain DPS, you need wave clear, you need merc clear, you need pick, you need team fight damage, whatever, literally anything you could ask for for a DPS, Sylve can play it. The band makes perfect sense, and chat, if you are a DPS player looking for a DPS hero to play, that's who you should be thinking about. Brightwing, going to be the first pick from Renella on the other side right here. And again, chat, please, please tell me if I'm saying any of these players' names wrong at any point. What map is this? This is Dragonshire. Now taking us into game two, we're gonna get to see the first picks for Oxygen at this point. And Hogger, no surprises there, followed up by Muradin from Bad Benny. Bad Benny, notably a player with HGC experience here going into this game. Also, Hasuab's Nick, just such a stacked team uh, in terms of HGC experience, the veteran presence on Oxygen here. Oh no, I've been got when I said Dragonshire in the chat. <laughs> Reading it, there we see Diablo and Hanzo are, are the response from Rage Quit Gaming here going into third bands. I expect to see a lot of Diablo as well. He's just such a strong tank presence. Uh, one of the higher skill floor tanks in the game, certainly. A uh, quick look at his win rates on ladder will surely back that up. Your average ladder player not able to make use of the almost chess-like ability of Diablo to shift the pieces around the board, but the ability to be as aggressive as you need, to shift your build as you need, to set up those kills, combine with your team, certainly massive for Diablo. Maev gonna be taken away as well. Cavalier Guest and I talked about my have a bit in game one. Certainly a strong hero, able to punish clumps, able to provide your team that wave clear, that AoE damage. And honestly, kind of overbuffed, if you ask me. My have was already a strong hero, and then they decided to make her even stronger. So if you have a my have player, certainly a threat. Tychus always going to be a damage threat onto Diablo. Not going to allow that for the side of Oxygen, who now get to decide some of their picks here. Now we see both of the front lines so far selected for Oxygen Esports, leaving them a DPS, a flex, and a heal. A few options left able to respond to what we see, and there's another Sergeant Hammer! Are we just gonna have a hammer every series? Is that what's going on here? Hasu Ives picking up the hammer, not even fifth picking it, and now Yasu on that Karazim. Yasu, a player known for his Lucio, but able to play a lot of different healers at a high level as a competitor. And I gotta say, what's what's going on with the hammer? Am I behind on the times? As a lowly NLS, <laughs> NASL player, am I just missing out on that secret sauce? However, hammer did lose in the series number one, game number one. Hasuab's hoping to reverse that trend here in series number two. Sonya Greymane rounding out the draft for Rage Quit Gaming. We have one more pick available to us. 
and it looks like i honestly think rage quit gaming looks like they'll be able to contest onto hasuabs they look like they have the tools to be able to get some damage there but hasuabs confident in his hammer Nick is spamming hammer has been called. Thank you for this insider information, this context, Lobber. I appreciate that. And Lobber, strong performance in that series number one. Good stuff. Nick rounding out the draft with the Stukov right here. We see the full five on five comps. Now with hammer at this point, really whenever a hammer is in the game, I almost feel like the game is no longer Heroes of the Storm, but it is instead Hammer of the Storm. One team trying to protect her, one team trying to take her down. If she is allowed to shoot uninterrupted, she will take you out. I still got the women want me fish fear me hat on. You know what it is. I'm ready to see some gameplay here. Dragonshire. Dragonshire, historically, in my opinion, a map where the better team tends to win. And I know that might sound silly. You might be like, doesn't the better team do tend to win on every map? But in particular, Dragonshire just tests your communication, your trust of your teammates, your ability to play split, because you have to control the entire map all at once. You can't just five man right off the bat. You can certainly with a double cap in that bot lane, looking for that strong bot lane pressure, but really just a strong map for showcasing a team's ability to work together. We've got our game starting here, going into series number two, game number one, Oxygen versus Rage Quit Gaming. Let's take a look at the comms here. We've got 19 CM on Hogger, Yasu playing Karzim, Hasu Abs, who apparently is spamming Sergeant Hammer, Nick on the Stukov, and Bad Benny playing Muradin. Taking a sip of my water real quick. Guys, I'll be honest with you, I have no damn clue how to say this Diablo's name. Or the Grey Man. Okay, <laughs> but we have... Peepo Shy, ooh woo. I'm gonna call you Peepo on the Sonya. We got RGQ on the Diablo, Ranella, Brightwing. No Game No Life being on the Hanzo and Limu? I'm, that's gonna be my best guess on the Gray Man and Bad Benny already landing an aggressive stun onto Hanzo. Phase shift popped basically at the very start of the game here. Both teams vying to get a little bit of damage edge on each other. Hasuab's just right here in the middle of lane. I'm going to siege up and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, instant cleanse from the Stormbolt by Renella. Very fast response right there. Very well timed. He is able to save Limu and no one is going to go down in this level one scuffle just quite yet. Yasu rotating towards top lane, looking to help catch the rotation right here. Staying in the bush. And there's the rotation from Diablo, but Yasu is on the scene. This is a three on two in favor of Rage Quit Gaming. 19 CM, oh, actually walked straight into Brightwing, but Brightwing was phase shifting on out of there. Stormbolt barely not connecting onto Diablo. 19 CM trying to escape. Oh, will go down, no game, no life. Well-timed, well-placed scatter. And that is first blood a minute into this game by Rage Quit Gaming. Hasuab's now backing up for the tap here. Mercenary camps have spawned at this point. Expect both teams to play on them. Yasu catching this top soak. Diablo will be here. Is not going to be able to find anything. Limu and Renella taking their bruiser camp at the moment. Hasuab's sieging on to the siege camp. Very well fitting in terms of the name. Yasu and 19CM. And teams just looking to take out all the camps right here. And this seems like the only thing that can cause a bit of a ceasefire in these series today. And now we see some strong top lane pressure actually foregoing the siege camp on the side of Rage Quit Gaming. Gonna look to get some top pressure here at least. Stepping right on up, Limu looking for that tower damage. Diablo stunning Bad Benny, or at least attempting to, not quite able to get it. And now Hasuab's on the scene, sieging up right in the faces of Rage Quit Gaming, able to get a couple shots onto Limu. Yasu's here to help him out as well. Hasuab's well-timed on getting out of that siege mode. Looks like he's able to pop into and out of it at will whenever is good for the moment. And now we see here Nick actually sieging away at no game, no life, preventing him from being able to walk up and auto-attack these siege giants, instead forcing him to defend. Sorry, I'm missing out on the action. That's my bad. Flamecaster, Peepo Shy able to be okay. And that is a return kill from Oxygen Esports, taking down the Grey Mane and getting a strong push out of top lane with Hasuabs. Dragon Knight being threatened by Oxygen as well, controlling both trines of the game. Strong top lane presence, near full level lead after dropping the first blood. You love to see it. Bad Benny shutting down Diablo's rotation on the top lane, and this push is not over anytime soon. And Diablo, not able to rotate out, has to prevent Bad Benny from getting that shrine cap until Hanzo able to get that bot lane clear, and already so much damage going out onto this top board. 
Yasu takes a bit of damage, is able to jump out onto Hasuwabs. Multiple members of Oxygen Esports dropping very low. They've got to be careful, Yasu, wow, dropping so low. That had to be a single digit amount of HP at that point. And now Renilla able to get that top cap, that full level lead evaporated in an instant. As we saw a little bit of minion clear happening right there. Some of those XP leads can be a little misleading in the early game. Often coming out of one team, simply clearing the minions earlier than the other. Now, no game, no life, responding in kind, getting some bot lane pressure right here. Huge damage onto Nick, who's not afraid at all. Steps in for the aggressive reactive Ballista Spores. Yasu forcing out the rotation, forcing out the phase shift. Polly onto Yasu, who is very, very low, getting chased down by Diablo. Doesn't look like they have a realistic way to hop out of this one. And Stukov also going down, dude. These teams just love to fight all over the place. And now Yasu actually still not dead just quite yet. I was following the wrong person. I should have looked at Stukov. Yasu, wait a second. Hold on. Hasuabs able to jump on out of there. We also see a fight top lane. They just love fighting everywhere. Now 19, chucking that Diablo, chucking that dynamite onto it. Wow, what a kill, dude. We see a fight at bottom, mid, and top, all in short order. Back to back to back. You love the action here. Four kills total in this game. A clean, even 2-2 split. Both teams on the cusp of hitting level 8 here, vying for control of these lanes. No game, no life is dropping very low, though. The bio kill switch, and damn, I'm missing the action. Renilla gets killed in the mid lane. Aggressive move by Oxygen Esports. Forgive me a bit, chat. It's been a while since I've done one of these. And we see here Diablo rotating in onto Bad Benny, who attempted to stall the capture, but not able to get it in time. Dwarf Toss is used. Yasu dropping like a stone! Wow, huge damage from the Hanzo phase shift will allow Limu to survive for a moment. Dwarf Toss actually interrupted by a well-timed Diablo shadow charge. And now Nick at this point trying to get out is going to be okay. Red team controlling both shrines, but not quite able to get a Dragon Knight just quite yet, getting some siege damage onto bottom lane. 19 CM forced to sit back and clear for a moment. And now Nick taking a lot of damage in the meantime as he looks to contest. Meanwhile, Diablo in mid trying to get this dragon. Only Bad Benny on the scene able to contest it at the moment is going to get chipped down by Limu. But mm, all right, all right, all right. We're, it's, it's just a game at this point. I'm trying to see how many I can miss in the same game here. One for one in the bottom lane. Hasuabs over here contesting this shrine. There's the bright wing face shits on the top lane. Oh, Diablo on the scene. Lightning breath onto Bad Benny. Well timed leap from Peepo Shy. Able to finish off the hogger. BFG not quite exactly where they need it. And it looks like it's just going to be hogger going down here in this top lane. Limu immediately converting this into fast siege pressure on the top lane. Diablo getting this top shrine capture. Top shrine in favor of red. Bot shrine in favor of blue. We see a lot of presence here in this top lane, a rotation down toward the mid lane now. Hasuabs waiting there in siege mode. Limu jumping over the wall, getting onto that bruiser camp right now. Diablo, knowing that he doesn't have his team, actually forced to step back a bit. A bit of an overstep in the mid lane will get deleted by Yasu's seven-sided strike. And that, they don't care how tanky you are. When you do 7% max HP damage, you can have a million HP. And at that point, he's still just absolutely shredding you. Here we see Peepo Shy getting hit by the Stukov Pustule. We'll be able to walk right on out of there. Yasu pressuring the siege camp. Some well-timed picks so far. Still even kill split, though. Five on five split between these two teams. Diablo with the flank onto Hasuabs here. Hasuabs stepping forward aggressively, maybe unaware of the danger that he finds himself in, is able to actually boop out Diablo with a very long-range boop. Is perfectly fine. Now with a bit of siege pressure onto bot lane from Rage Quit Gaming into Oxygen here. Diablo looking for the flank, well scouted by Yasu. Able to block it out, and here's another seven-sided seven strike strike onto Diablo, able to dodge the BFG. Lightning Breath actually forcing out Oxygen to back away despite catching him in the bush. Some ults traded, some abilities back and forth, but nobody going down just quite yet, and the siege on bot lane continues. People shy looking for the flank. Diablo actually hopping the wall onto Bad Benny. Bad Benny's a bird, and he's gonna be okay. Dragon Arrow not connecting! And I thought this was EU, but I'm seeing the NA Arrow. Let's go, chat! Hogger now pressuring onto top lane with this Bruiser Camp, wants to be able to finish off that fort, would love to get his team the first fort of the game. 
Now we see backing off here, Rage Quit Gaming, attempting to take this neutral Bruiser Camp for the first time. Notably having the rotational advantage with their Sonya here in Tribush, looking for the flank, but seeding that top fort in the process, also down level 13. Massive shove does not connect as Nick, Nick is leaped onto by the Sonya, not quite able to finish him off just yet, but there goes Karazine. Yasu dropping down, lurking arm, they're hopping on out of their oxygen, forced to run away at this point. So much presence here in the bottom lane, Hogger still chipping away, has not left top just yet, still has that bruiser camp, still getting whatever split push he can. But this bot fort in the meantime is dropping for oxygen and bot fort classically considered the most important lane on Dragonshire. You have three different camps that you can push it. If you go back, you watch HTC games, you watch any level of competitive Heroes of the Storm and they will overwhelmingly end on Dragonshire through that bottom lane. So a trade, but maybe a costly one for Oxygen Esports right here now. Finally down one kill, five to six here. Going in to this Dragonshire game, nine minutes in. Sonya and Hogger contesting this top shrine. Peepo Shy and 19 trading some hits. We do see a flank from the rest of Rage Quit Gaming coming onto the scene. 19 CM's gonna hop right on out of there before getting caught. But now with the bot siege camp, with the control of both shrines, red team looking like they've got a handle on things at the moment. Limu getting stunned by Bad Benny. Yasu not quite gonna jump right in there to follow up. Is a little bit scared of what may be lurking in the shadows. Diablo stepping forward, lands the stun onto Yasu, followed up by the dragon arrow. Huge damage. Nick just absolutely getting deleted to start things out. Shockwave from Hogger. That's a one for one right now. Both teams going for it. Two for one in favor of Oxygen. Limu dropping very, very low in the top, but it looks like it will remain Finally, a two for one in favor of Oxygen, evening up the kill counts yet again, and they're just gonna keep trading blows back and forth, start to finish until this game ends. Siege Camp, however, still pushing out this bot lane, still softening up yet again. That top lane, that bot lane, I excuse me, for Oxygen. Oxygen, at this point, I think if you give up a late game Dragon Knight, it's just so threatening to your ability to stay in this game. A win con is starting to materialize for Rage Quit Gaming as Bad Benny takes a lot of damage in mid lane. Yasu able to secure Dragon Knight number one, ten and a half minutes into this game. Oxygen Esports biding their time, waiting for level 16. Stun onto Limu, forces out the fast phase shift from Renella. Stun combo into Nick, though, finds himself deep in there, trying to kick away the Diablo to get him to safety, uh, to get Nick into safety. Nick, now half health, will be able to back off, hit that healing fountain. He's going to be okay. We see Sonya rotating after having cleared a bit of top lane, looking to get their team level 16, and pretty soon these teams are going to be at equal talents here. Stun misses onto, onto Greyman, but it's so huge. Regardless, Sonya forced to leap away, gets finished off by BFG, the Dragon Knight kick finishing off Greymane, and Oxygen Esports takes the three-for-one trade, losing Hogger in the process, but you take that trade any day of the week. Four-for-one, actually. Nick able to barely walk out of that lightning breath. Hold on. Diablo kick towards him, he's got the kill switch, he's gonna be okay. Multiple members of Oxygen low, but not out, and you love to see it. Four kills for one, it is huge at this moment, and now they've got the opportunity to get a bit of that push pressure and open up the map. Seven-sided strike on Diablo, have we seen this movie before? I feel like I've seen this a couple times right here. Diablo just getting shredded over and over and over by Yasu, consistently pressuring him. Anytime they're able to CC Diablo, make sure they can get him in that seven-sided strike. He's just getting deleted. So much push pressure right here, capitalizing immediately on their advantages for Oxygen Esports, resetting Diablo's souls, getting an XP lead, a full level lead, going into level 20 here and looking for these camps. Three camps being taken in the current state of the game. Oxygen Esports taking their Siege Camp and Bruiser Camp. Similarly, Rage Quit Gaming taking their Bruisers a little bit behind here as they go into Siege, and we may see an invade on the side of Oxygen. Looks like Oxygen thinking better of it. Instead, actually pressuring up towards the top side. I should have seen that coming. Hammer rotates slow. Very, very slow. Pressuring now over towards the top side. Hasu Obs clearing this out, getting that Bruiser Camp advantage. Meanwhile, Siege Camp advantage for Rage Quit Gaming. And hey, if you know Hogger is on the very opposite side of the map, not able to rotate no mount whatsoever, this camp is absolutely free. Oxygen surely aware of this trade. This is now a double camp in favor of Rage Quit Gaming in this bottom lane. 
With both a bruiser and a siege, they know they're going to pressure this. Top lane bruisers as well, threatening the top keep for rage quit. Oxygen forming up for the bottom keep defense at this point. Limu shredding that tower with that Greymane sustain damage. And with Greymane Hanzo, your ability to hit buildings is pretty strong. Nick landing the pustule onto no game, no life. Bad Benny jumping in aggressively, follows it up. BFG onto Hanzo, it's huge. And that all started with Nick landing the pustule. The follow up from the team is instant and massive. And all of a sudden, Rage Quit Gaming is running tail tucked between their legs. Limu is second to go down. The chase continues. Another Storm Bolt lands, cleansed by Renella. Diablo jumping back in with the Shadow Charge, trying to distract and buy his team time, is getting out of there. He's isolated. I doubt he can escape at this point, but he at least managed to guarantee that his teammates would not go down as well. Will finally... He's getting a lot of self-healing, but he will go down at this point. There is Diablo. Three kills for nothing. Level 20 advantage secured for Oxygen Esports. Muradin, Bad Benny, heading over to the Stock Temple with the level 20 advantage. With the three kills, surely a Dragon Knight is in their hands, and they're going to be able to start opening up this game and looking for that win con. Already we see Oxygen Esports pushing up here, preparing bottom wave, moving Hammer into position, getting her ready for this push. Already sieging and gonna start chipping away here. Hammer with the damage, going to get poked a little bit by Hanzo, but there's only so much he can do. Nick very aggressively stepping forward, knowing there's no Diablo to flip him over this wall. Bad Benny stepping in, not able to land the Storm Bolt. They would have loved to get that kill onto Peepo Shy if they could. The BFG follow-up from Hasuabs was instant, looking for that burst damage, but still the push continues. Diablo respawning right now, but the siege damage is immense. Yasu way in that back line, not trying to get caught, ready to save a teammate whenever they can, and this Dragon Knight still has plenty of health on it, Dragon Arrow connecting onto Hammer will be fine. Level 20 still solidly in favor of Oxygen Esports. This keep will go down. And at this point, this is an open core on the side of Rage Quit Gaming. So they have to play a very disciplined game from this point out. You see Bad Benny not able to connect the Stormbolt yet again onto Limu. Response stun from Diablo. They are down 20. They don't want a huge scuffle off of their core. Lightning Breath scaring away the members of Oxygen Esports. Running away. Limu diving in. Shockwave from 19CM buying them some time. They do a 20, but they're so low. And Nick just getting shredded. Now Diablo going in. It's a one for one at this moment. Diablo gro goes right into the seven-sided strike though. Hasuab's able to boost her on out of there with a sliver of HP. Limu now caught in the middle of oxygen. Level 20 has been secured for Rage Quit Gaming. So much back and forth. 19 CM started to drop down low now. Two for two at the moment. This is three on three in total, but Hasuabs is completely out of the action. Three on two in favor of Rage Quit Gaming. Bad Benny and Yasu running on out of here. Using their move speed, they're gonna be able to get out. And what a defense right there from Rage Quit Gaming. They're still not done yet. They're still chasing Yasu. Oh, a bit of questionable pathing. Wait, there's the arrow. Love to see it. Parting the Red Sea on the side of Oxygen right there. Dodging it out. Han Hanzo wanted to get that pick right there. Not quite able to finish it off. No longer has the Dragon Arrow. And now we see Oxygen Esports reforming. They have Hasu. They have Yasu. They have everyone in here. Hasu and Yasu. Kind of funny. It rhymes. They charge in. Diablo getting stunned by the Storm Bolt. And it sets up another seven-side strike wait a second though hammer dropping very very low in the back Ooh, the catapult eating those scatters you'd love to see it just catapult interfering saying get down mr president blocking the shots so much action but still if you're oxygen despite getting uh, a few deaths right there as they escaped you've got to love the position that you're in at this point the open bottom keep the top keep that's very low representing some passive push pressure right there as well and all they need is just to get a couple picks or one Dragon Knight and this game is over. I will remind you the Dragon Knight scales every minute. It gets stronger over time. These late game Dragon Knights are a significant push threat. We see Diablo now going for the top lane capture at this point. Both teams forming up in this top lane. Renella, the only member not present, but also the only member with a global in this game. Hasu in the back of the lane. They're a little bit scared of the potential flank, but Pipu Shai is actually in the back. 
And so far, just some hits. And wait, hold on a second. Here's a seven-sided strike. Not able to finish off Pipo Shai. An instant face shift for the response. I'm going to try and shift out more here. Bad Benny running away, taking a bit of damage. So many hits going back and forth. Nobody going to drop just quite yet, though. Looking for that aggressive kill pressure right there. Both teams with the split. We saw Hammer dropping low. We saw Muradin dropping low. The, sp the split pressure not able to finish off anybody just quite yet here. And now both teams taking a bit of a temporary ceasefire here. Rage Quit Gaming capturing bottom. Oxygen capturing top. And this is going to be yet another neutral bruiser camp in favor of Rage Quit Gaming. We see Hasuabs on the other hand pressuring out this top fort or this top keep, rather, and Oxygen putting a lot of pressure on top lane throughout this game. They would love to get that passive pressure right there, get those catapults just chipping away, forcing continuous rotations from Sonya or Brightwing. Now Bad Benny scouting as all of the members of Rage Quit Gaming cycle over toward this top lane. They are as five. Anzo and Greymane staying off the map at the moment, not showing on the minion wave. And both teams just kind of playing Ring Around the rosy at the moment as they alternate altars. Nick stepping forward knows that he's got nobody anywhere around him. He knows he's got his team with him as well. Getting that wave clear with the lurking arm. And we may see a clash here soon as these teams start to form up. Oxygen Esports controlling these bushes. Diablo's in there very deep. It wouldn't surprise me to see a seven-sided strike on him yet again. I think every single one has been cast on him. There it is. Everything's going out onto Diablo, but he is healthy. And now at this point, Bad Benny jumping on out of there. That's an aggressive lightning breath. Diablo is the first to go down in this fight. Oxygen, still all members alive, but they are very low at this point. Lurking arm going out onto People Shy. Bad Benny's got no HP, but it doesn't matter. He's jumping in. No game, no life. Taking a bit of damage. Bad Benny's going to back right on out of here. And here's Yasu with a very aggressive positioning. Bad Benny lands the storm bolt onto Limu. Renella with the quick response of the blink heal. It will be enough to save Limu right there. But Sonya, on the other hand, a fight on two fronts, and I keep looking at the wrong one. Sonya dropping very down low. Bad Benny not able to connect the stun onto No Game No Life. Will back off. Cursed bullet hitting him, but he's low HP. Not a lot of damage. And this is five on four in favor of Oxygen Esports at this time. Sonya down. And at this point, Rage Quit Gaming, aware that Oxygen Esports has the primary amount of their team in this top side of the map, looking for Diablo to capture bot, but that leaves the rest of their team a little bit exposed. Bullseye used to ignore the shrine capture to interrupt it, and Yasu actually stepping off of it as Diablo captures bottom. Bad Benny missing the stun onto Renella. Siege camp captured for Rage Quit Gaming. Oxygen Esports looking to aggress forward here, scouting out, not able to find anything yet, and Sonya's gonna come up soon. Bad Benny here now stepping up toward this Dragon Knight. We're actually going to see 19 CM get in it. Bad Benny zoning for the capture. And this is indeed a very late game Dragon Knight for the side of Oxygen Esports. It's scaled to 21 minutes. It's level 23 versus 22. And rather than go straight onto the core, we're going to see some pressure onto this mid keep here, utilizing the excellent siege damage of the Sergeant Hammer in addition to the Dragon Knight. Limu getting started with the defense right away, able to deftly dodge this, the weighted pustule from the Stukov. Bad Benny interfering with Diablo as well as the lurking arm, not letting him cast anything just quite yet. And now at this point, Dragon Knight not actually hitting the structure a ton, but Sergeant Hammer getting in the chip damage where they can. Top keep will go down. And so now at this point, Oxygen Esports is threatening to take out the very last keep of the game. Dragon Knight coming in, going to go ahead and finish it off. And there it is. No keeps remain for Rage Quit Gaming. They have an entirely open core and only a single fort down on the side of Oxygen. 19C, I'm going to go ahead and spin right on out of the action. Rage Quit Gaming got to do what they can at this point, but I got to say they have so much pressure on their lanes. Consistently going to have a catapult every single wave. You can see bot, mid, Top, catapults, catapults, catapults. It's going to be a lot to deal with, especially on a map that negates as much rotating and splitting as this does. That uh, rather necessitates as much rotating and splitting as it does. And now both teams taking out their own side's bruiser camps here before surely an inevitable showdown must occur. 
Both teams gravitating towards the top side, and hey, this feels very familiar. We just saw these teams meet up in this area before, but not going to fight just quite yet. Bot Siege Giants are looming, though, in favor of Oxygen Esports that will demand a rotation sooner or later from the side of Rage Quit Gaming. There we see Ranella with that global, gonna go ahead and defend bottom, able to rejoin their team on a whim. And the first neutral Bruiser Camp of the game for Oxygen Esports will be taken 23 minutes into the game here. They have a Bruiser Camp in this top fort, but honestly, I think if you're Oxygen, you don't really care that much at this point. You still have the fort, you still have the keep, and games don't end top lane anyway on Dragonshire. Hammer actually boostering for the rotation at this point. Interesting decision. But I'm going to trust Hasu's hammer over mine 10 times out of 10, 100 times out of 100, 1,000 times out of 1,000. Oxygen now controlling the vision of this top side will clear out this bruiser camp. Not a lot else to do at this point in the game, getting again that vision advantage in the top lane through that passive push pressure. Rage Quit Gaming taking out their siege camp in the meantime. Rage Quit Gaming looking to control this bottom shrine right away. Similarly, we have Hogger taking out the top right there, 19 CM. And at this point, Renella forced to play near permanent janitor duty in the base right here, using that global to stay with her team at all times, despite being forced to constantly clear out the wave. I will say though, Renella's timing on these phase shifts needs to be instant to save from the burst combo a storm bolt bfg and seven-sided strike no matter who you are from brightwing to diablo on rage quit gaming that combo will hundred to zero you unless you are getting some immediate assistance Diablo now coming over to this top shrine, and again a little bit more ring around the rosy action both teams alternating their captures people shy lurking they do have leap, so they are able to threaten from over walls here. Just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of clear now, and you see Rage Quit Gaming forced to back off a bit, clear these lanes, and that's being taken advantage of by Oxygen Esports. Muradin rotating faster with the ability of that Dwarf Toss there. Rage Quit Gaming, though, they know somebody's top lane, so they're moving up, and they gotta contest this dragon. Bad Benny looking for the flank right here, but Limu will scout it out sitting in that bush. They are fully aware of where Diablo is. Retreat ping on the bush. It all comes down to this point. Bad Benny used the dwarf toss to move forward. Weighted pustule. Looks like it landed onto Limu. Couple hits going back and forth here. Both teams posturing, looking for whatever they can, even the slightest advantage. I must point out that this is not Hellgate, this is Lord of Terror for Diablo. Not able to get the surprise wall stuns, Diablo gets seven-sided striked, BFG'd, everything will go down in spite of the phase shift. Taking him out, the burst damage is huge! Limu as well will be second to fall, Dragon Knight secured, this is surely shaping up to be game for Oxygen Esports. Now, Sonya getting chased down, Bad Benny with the heavy impact, finishing off Sonya, and Dragon Knight has a one-track mind going straight for this core. This is surely game in favor of Oxygen, it will take a miracle on the side of Rage Quit Gaming to save the game at this point. At this point, they've got one damage left in the Hanzo. He's doing what he can, but it's a 26 minute Dragon Knight and this game is over. Oxygen Esports taking game number one in solid fashion, losing only a single fort for the entirety of the game, taking down every building on the side of Rage Quit Gaming. Whew. What strong presence Strong showing from Oxygen Esports there, getting the consistent map pressure. The burst damage combo was so huge. Diablo, it doesn't matter at this point. Let me let me go ahead and pull this up here. Let's get a look at these talents. It doesn't matter if you've got the soul shield, if they are putting that much damage on you, if half of your HP bar is going away to seven-sided strike, and the burst is so concentrated, so coordinated, just absolutely together. Very wonderfully played by the members of Oxygen Esports, and I'm sure kava has gotta be happy about that one. Definitely gonna talk a little bit about that when he comes back after this series. Four series three and four. Commanding stats for Hasu, not even dying a single time that game. 28,000 siege, 30k hero damage on second place. Absolutely comical numbers right there. Very well done. Whew. What a what a game, dude. 
absolutely what a game going 26 minutes but oxygen looked solid for nearly the entirety of that game only really ever being kind of shaky with the retreat from that bottom keep push dropping a couple members but immediately getting back into the game in strong fashion Ooh, I need a drink of water after this, dude. <laughs> these, these games are crazy, though. This is high-octane, high-action gameplay. You love to see these combos. These teams have clearly practiced it. The hammer from Hasu just absolutely mwah, chef's kiss. You love it. I try to, like, swallow back here because I don't want to give you guys that ASMR cup drinking experience, you know? Alrighty, as we see, I'm getting an invite to the next lobby. I'm slacking a little bit right here, and I think we have nearly everybody ready to go for game number two. Let's take a look at the map situation right here. Game number two, we have Rage Quit Gaming taking on Tomb of the Spider Queen as their map choice. And Oxygen Esports will have first pick as a result. Tomb of the Spider Queen, typically a map where wave clear is king. You are constantly in the lanes. The objective does not take you out of the lanes at any point. And waves just help you in the objective itself. The more you clear waves, the stronger your objective will be in terms of how pushed up it is. And the more you clear the opposing waves, the further back the opposing team's objective will be. Let's see right here, just gonna go ahead and flash the standings once more. They did not change after game number one of series number two, but Oxygen Esports with their win of game number one, guaranteeing that they will get at least one point this series, even if they drop game two. So they maintain this number three position at worst and go up to number one at best. Women want me fish, fear me hat redeemed yet again. I can't wear it more than I already am, guys. At the start of the stream, you redeemed enough hat wearings to cover every game today. At this point, if you redeem more, you're just chucking your points into the wind. You're throwing them down the drain. You're not getting anything. Like, ch chat, chat. Look, look me in my eyes. This is a waste. It's already on. <laughs> I don't have more. <laughs> I have my drinking hat, but we don't we don't have anything in it. It's just it's just tubes. Regardless, we're waiting on game number two here for Tomb of the Spider Queen. Everybody is in the lobby. We look like we're forming up. I I don't know why I bother to say anything. We have additional women want me fish fear me ads. It it is already here. Let's go. Teams are ready for game number two. We're taking it in. Final game of the series of Oxygen versus Rage Quit. Regardless of how this series goes, it is a best of two every series today. As I said before, wave clear centric map, and there are a couple heroes that just dominate the competitive scene at the moment. I would be amazed if we did not see some attention onto Junkrat, onto Hogger. There's the Tracer ban. I want to see some Tracer personally. I don't even necessarily need a flame, because you know me. I'm the Tracer guy. I love to see it, but it is going to get taken away. No Tracer for our first two series of the day today. Look at it this way. That's the first five games of Next Stream covered. At this point, if it actually worked like that Ark Intemable for these point redemptions, it would be like the Next Stream after that. <laughs> is where we basically start chipping these in at this point. But it doesn't work like that. You're just, you're chucking points into the wind, okay? Straight into the garbage disposal with these point redemptions. There's the Junkrat ban, as I mentioned earlier. Again, I'd be amazed to see Hogger, not at least strongly considered by both teams, if not outright picked or banned, as well as a Johanna. Best of two or two games no matter what? Best of two means two games no matter what. In the best of two format, you always play two games. If you win 2-0, you get three points. If you tie, each team gets one point. And now the Maiav band out as well, a flex hero that's able to contribute wave clear to her team, as well as just being super strong, and Yasu not gonna be able to play that Lucio here in game number two. 
Blaze, the first pick for Oxygen. Blaze, strongly considered one of the best offlaners in the entire game, and with that Blaze pick being shown Leoric from Peeposhai, I'm wondering, are we going to see another March of the Black King? Cav did talk to us in our first series about Blaze's bunker being one of the best counters to Leoric's Entomb. You are, in fact, able to get into the bunker from within an Entomb, even if it's outside the Entomb, for the escape. Anduin now picked for Yasu, and we're going to get a Tychus. Tychus able to shred through a Leoric if he has the safety to do so. Neither team I feel committing super, super hard to a strategy so far, particularly Rage Quit Gaming. This is rather generalist. With the Sylvanas, with the Leoric, you could retool this in a variety of ways. Ooh, Kerrigan! Okay. You know, here in North America, we don't get a lot of Kerrigan players. We used to have Psalm back in the day. We used to have Nex Eterni, both of those players moving on to different pastures, not gonna say greener. And there is the Johanna band out right there as well. Don't think we're gonna see the Augur, but at least we see the Johanna band out right there. What is the support meta these days? A lot of Anduin, a lot of Brightwing, a lot of Regar, as we see right there as well, and a lot of Lucio. And so far, we've also seen a very, very high proportion of Muradins showing up in these games. When you have so much synergy with your team, when you have so much trust on them to follow up for you on these kill creations, it just makes sense. You know that your teammates are going to be there to snap onto whoever you can catch out with the stun. You can play as aggro as you want with that massive HP bar. And we see some burst damage coming in right here from the site of Oxygen Esports. Nick picking up that Genji. Bad Benny on the Anubarak. Early pick Leoric do indeed be something to behold. One pick remaining for Rage Quit Gaming, but I gotta say, I'm looking at these drafts and I just think to myself, if Oxygen Esports manages to catch someone near the Tychus, that person is getting deleted. It can be any member of the team, okay? Anyone on the side of Rage Quit Gaming, does not matter who you are, you are not surviving, getting CC chained down by an Anubarak, getting percent damage shredded by Tychus, and getting jumped on by a Genji. Rainer going to be the last pick for Limu here. And let's go ahead and pull the cam back on me as we wait for the load screen. Going into game number two. Genji, of course, a strong pick anytime you want to control the rotations. I fully expect to see the Genji just absolutely bothering this Leoric this game. Leoric hates going into range and mobility. And Genji, able to abuse him at range, able to abuse him with the mobility. I expect constant ganks, rotational interference out the wazoo, strong presence on these camps in the early game. Tomb of the Spider Queen, naturally just a rotationally inclined map in the early game. You've got control onto the Bruiser camp. You've got that early siege camp to contest for. Both teams surely vying for it as we now move into game number two, Series number two, Oxygen Esports versus Rage Quit Gaming. On the side of Rage Quit Gaming, coming into this game down 1-0, looking to even it up and pick up a point for themselves. We have Pipo Shai on the Leoric. Limu playing Raynor. No game, no life on Sylph. Uh, it's RGQ. I, I don't. I don't. Dude, forgive me. All right, on the Muradin and Renella. You're gonna be on that Regar. If anybody can tell me how to say whatever this is. I, I would deeply appreciate you in the chat. Hasuab's gonna be on Tychus, Bad Benny on Anubarak, Yasu on the Anduin, Nick playing Genji, and 19CM on Blaze. Already damage being traded back in. As soon as both teams even see each other, the damage is instant. And now Muradin jumping in. Thor Rage Quit Gaming barely misses the Storm Bolt. Beautiful sidestep from Nick. 
Bad Benny diving in onto Limu does get the instant cleanse, but it's not enough to save him despite a fast response from Regar. First Blood, a mere 30 seconds into this game. Leora getting chunked down as well. May need a tap as they go towards this bottom side. Nick, hold on a second, jumping over the wall, and wow, they forced that Leora tap and killed him. And remember, tap does not get refreshed when you die. It used to in the early games of Hots. Leoric losing his tap and a second death, and we see a four-man push less than a minute into the the game getting half a tower and two kills for oxygen oxygen coming out swinging in game number two there we see muradin jumping in not connecting the storm bolt onto tychus however now bad benny cycling over to the mid lane nick maybe wanting to secure the siege camp maybe not while his teammates are back on the bruiser camp but we'll scout it out spotting this muradin both teams on their respective bruiser camps at the moment Just call him Shizak. Shizak. What are we? What are we saying here? Alrighty. And now with both teams still in their Bruiser camp, however, Oxygen Esports taking their Bruiser camp significantly quicker than the side of Rage Quit Gaming. Hasuab stepping in does get aggressively storm bolted. Will be a okay though. He's sitting at a cool 90% HP, picking up that regen globe to top him off. And now some damage onto Peepo Shy. Seven players in this game in the bot lane. Hold on a second though. Bad Benny ganking Limu, securing the body block as well. The double tank combo onto Raynor. No ability to escape that body block. Well timed rotation by Bad Benny. Three kills to nothing in favor of Oxygen, averaging more than a minute, more than a kill per minute at this point. Bad Benny dropping some HP though, but this is a full level early lead for Oxygen Esports. Ooh, Shizak missing the Storm Bolt on. Onto the Anubarak. And at this point, Bad Benny just warding off the rotations. That's a fast stun combo onto Muradin, followed in by Nick, who's just barely not able to finish him off. But now Muradin forced to back off tap and wait a little bit for his HP to come back. Bruiser Camp stepping up. Oxygen Esports not interested in overstepping to push with it. Instead, gonna back off Hasuab's trading damage with Leoric here in the bottom lane. Heavy rotation towards Hasuabs. He's got to be aware of the danger he's in. Muradin actually backing off here as we see Limu attempting to rotate out of vision to take this bottom siege camp right here. Oh, and wow, Bad Benny hitting Sylvanas out of the haunting wave. We'll be able to snipe him perfectly playing over that wall. You love to see that aggression, that experience evident right there. Shizak stepping forward, trying to get some damage on to Nick. Not going to land it. Actually, stun's going out onto Shizak. Oh, Burrow charge from Bad Benny. Not able to continue the CC chain onto the Muradin. Muradin able to dwarf toss right on out of there. But at this point... Rage Quit Gaming has dropped a significant amount of gems. Oxygen still holding everything, and Bad Benny continues to just constantly play over the wall. Limu not going to get hit by the stun? What's going on here? Uh, okay, I'm not sure if my internet dropped. I don't know if that was an issue with the game. I, I hope that uh, I hope that we're still here on the stream, but we did see a bit of a freeze there. Raynor went down. Renella is going to go down as well. Six kills to nothing in favor of Oxygen. Still pressuring out Leoric, forced to Wraith Walk. Now Yasu hitting the aggressive chastise, setting up a CC chain. And like I said, they'll CC chain anybody on the side of Rage Quick Gaming. When you have a Tychus, when you have a new Brack Tychus Genji, you can kill whoever you want. Still a full level lead in favor of Oxygen as they get their first objective of the game. And this is looking dominating. Seven kills in four and a half minutes for Oxygen. Bad Benny taking a bit of chick damage from Limu. Gonna go ahead and back off there. Nick now looking for the rotation down. Is gonna get spotted by Peepo Shy. Gonna go ahead and trade hits back and forth. Nick easily winning this damage trade with the addition of Yasu. Actually gonna hop over the wall onto Peepo Shy. Not quite able to finish him off, but here is Shizak looking for the counter rotation. Not able to finish him off. Yasu maintains his presence here in the bot lane. Bad Benny getting chipped down by no game, no life in the top lane. 19 CM sieging top fort. The pressure is all over the place. Erden rotating aggressively on Bad Bunny does land the Storm Bolt, but the follow-up is not there. He's doing it by himself. Peepo Shy does land the Drain. Actually going to get counter-dived on by Bad Benny. Nothing quite yet. Bottom Fort does drop thanks to the combined siege efforts of Nick and Hasuabs. 
Rainer now in the back, clearing that up. Limu a little bit tired of getting dived on, I would imagine, by this point in the game, playing such an immobile character as Rainer. Two level lead at this point for Oxygen Esports. Honestly, I think they could invade the Bruiser camp at this point when you've got this strong of an advantage, but they are content to take their own Bruiser camp and trade with Rage Quit Gaming at this point in the game. Stream is fine. Looked like a server issue. I'm not quite sure what that was. I'm happy stream didn't go down. Uh, very strange issue, but it looks like we're past it. As we see a new Brack go again, Wraithwalk able to avoid the stun combo, getting unstoppable just in time for people shy. They're going to be okay. Guys, who is Peepo Shy? <laughs> I, I, I feel so goofy saying a Twitch emote for somebody's name. As we see Oxygen Esports here able to clearly get the Bruiser advantage. Their Mage Bruiser still not missing any HP. And there's a Genji Bomb going on to No Game No Life. Purge from Renella, able to just barely buy them enough time to escape. But Renella themselves is in danger, able to walk out with just the tiniest sliver of HP. No Game No Life, haunting, waving out of there. And that is a very aggressive bunker placement by 19CM, enabling so much damage. Multiple hearths forced on the side of Rage Quit Gaming as Oxygen backs off and leaves this Bruiser camp to be clear as they're looking to get yet another turn in. Now Oxygen Esports with the level 10 advantage and no vision on the side of Rage Quit Gaming. Oxygen able to go on to this boss. Bad Benny will get the capture while Oxygen is doing this boss. And keep in mind, Rage Quit has full knowledge that this boss is being taken. They're able to see it on their minimap that it did not despawn, but there's nothing they could do about it down level 10. Level 10 has been secured, but Bad Benny zoning them, trying not to get picked in the meantime, is able to burrow charge out with just a little bit of HP. And now, this is the situation you hate to be in. Genji Bomb, yet again, does get purged by Renella before getting hit by the Light Bomb themselves. Stormbolt does not connect onto Nick, able to Cyber Agility right on out of there. Wraithwalk forced out. Leoric is so low. Bad Benny punishing the Wraithwalk on the other end. Bad Benny, you love to see the presence of mind there. Able to stun Sylvanas off the Haunting Wave earlier, and now Leoric. And Cocoon on Muradin followed up excellently. Wow, Dwarf Toss. Hold on. We're getting a little bit of lag here yet again. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the game. Let's see. Alrighty, sorry about that, folks. It looks like my internet dipped out for just a moment there. What you missed was Muradin jumping out but not quite getting finished. I apologize for that. And now we see here a push from Oxygen Esports in this top lane, utilizing the boss and everything. Stun combo onto Limu. It's huge. They got it. Nick still continuing to dive. Will deflect onto No Game No Life. Able to walk away. But at this point, Rage Quit Gaming, things are not looking good. You've still got a half HP boss. You've still got a Web Weaver with just a little bit of HP. You've got an Odin. The pressure is immense. Stun combo hits Murad and he will go down. And now so much pressure here from Oxygen. They get a bit of core damage, but not enough picks to look for the whole shebang. They're going to get out of there. And meanwhile, let's look at this and bot lane, so much pressure. And this keep is going to go down despite the best efforts of Rage Quit Gaming. Down two keeps already, nine minutes into the game. Just one soul mid keep at roughly 60% HP is the last vestige of their defenses. It will once again take a miracle for Rage Quit Gaming to turn this into a W and even out this series. But they're not quite out for the count yet. That passive pressure in both of these side lanes will surely be a thorn in their side for the rest of their game. Rage Quit Gaming struggling to stay in it at this point. And now we see Bad Benny coming in for the aggressive rotation up level 13. Bad Benny actually clearing out bot lane. Nick going over and duking it out in mid lane versus Leoric. Bad Benny... Actually, Cocoon Sylvanas very aggressively, giving his team enough time to rotate in. Will stun out of Cocoon. Very well-timed purge from Regar, but no, Regar is the true target. Gets jumped on by a Nubarak. Will Ancestral healing themselves to survive. Nick getting on out of there. A lot of damage going out on the members of Red, but wait a second. How did Limu get over here? 
Limu getting chased down by Hasuabs will get finished off by the grenade, able to take him out. Pipu Shai, Wraith walking out of there, stunned yet again at the tail end of Wraith Walk by Bad Benny. Two members of Rage Quick Gaming dead. Three level lead for Oxygen, and they're not going anywhere. Odin has been placed down. Giants are here. Stun combo on the Murda. Chastise out of the Dwarf Toss. He's not going anywhere. Three kills for Oxygen. This has got to be game. A dominating game two, 11 minute victory, not even quite the full 11 minutes for Oxygen Esports, taking out this core, taking three points. And as of this core explosion right here, right now, Oxygen Esports is now the number one rated team in Masters Clash. We may see that change depending on how the standings shake out coming in our tail end two series of today. Wonderfully done by Oxygen absolutely just exerting their will all over rage kit rage quit gaming start to finish let's take a look at this uh, post game lobby zero deaths for even a single member of oxygen maintaining that trend of more than a kill per minute 13 kills in 11 minutes of game time do not mind the game time at the bottom it is bugged for custom games but that was an 11 minute game with 13 kills absolutely huge Hey, Nick picking up Wave of Shimada. I always really liked this talent. I felt like people would flame me for picking this one on Genji and SL. No, I really like this one. The extra attack range is huge. <laughs> Alrighty. What a masterful performance from the members of Oxygen Esports. I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get Cav back on the call. Ready for call back. I have asked him. We'll see if we can get him in here. And a new lobby is up, so we're going to go ahead and slide over to there. 